Alright, here I am with Terminator Resistance again. Now we have the new Infiltrator mode. Now I had played this before a few days ago with uh, it was an episode of my Until I Die series. Didn't make it. Got pretty far. Actually, it turns out I was pretty close to the end. Had I just not blown myself up with a grenade, I would have maybe, you know, won. <laughs> but anyway, I came back and I decided to play this game again, do a video of it, and my stupid ass failed to realize that my microphone wasn't turned on. So here I am again. Now I've already beaten this. So I do know my way around. Unfortunately though, or maybe fortunately for the sake of replay value, it does seem like there's a little bit of procedural generation going on. Ooh man, he was messed up. So, I don't know exactly where I have to go, I still have to explore the area. But I have a decent idea of the way the map is laid out, so hopefully I can just sort of move about and do what I have to do pretty quick. Now, for people who don't know what the hell I'm talking about, this is a new DLC map and campaign for the game Terminator Resistance. So, Terminator Resistance was a game that came out, I believe, November of 2019 as a sort of video game in the Terminator series. Now, it was a... I mean, it was sort of panned by the critics, although I'm not quite sure what game they were playing when they were talking so much smack on it. But I enjoyed it anyway. It is very much a product that was built out of sort of affection for particularly the original movie. Is there another one? Now in that game you played as a uh, Techcom resistance member named Rivers and you go through the war against Skynet. And I'm not quite sure how much time it's supposed to take place over but you do jump through like the start of the infiltrators appearing and, and getting all the time displacement equipment and, and sending like grease back in time and all that kind of shit. Now this game, this expansion though, is quite a bit different. I'm not playing as a techcom soldier, I'm playing as a terminator. And you're running around killing fools, killing techcom guys. This is the the gameplay loop with the original game based was based on doing a lot of missions. This thing and the missions tend to boil down to like head over in this direction and find this item and then bring it back. Head over in this direction and kill this machine and then head back. Head over in this direction and uh, I don't know find I don't know all sorts of shit like that. No one in here. <laughs> and there was some story involved. There are other characters. I can't say the characters were all that good, but they had characters. And there was some, I don't know, player choice involved in what you could say to people and what missions you would do to an extent. Though it was nothing really to write home about. This mode on the other hand, is, I mean, it has the same basic gameplay concepts, the same uh, shooting mechanics and all that kind of stuff, but there's really not much story going on here. What I'm doing is I'm playing as a Terminator, running around, and hitting up a bunch of different Techcom locations, bases, uh, hideouts, food supplies, radio station, whatever, in an attempt to um, uh, find intel. Now, I've picked up a few items. When I find another one, I'll, I'll mention it. But you're looking for intel, which is just like folders or laptops or something. Just to like find out information. Now, if you pick up enough pieces of intel, it will locate something on the map. Like, here's the resistance laboratory. That's an important location i got to find my way to. Once you find up enough intel, then it 
gives you a location on the map, which seems to be procedurally placed based on how uh, every time you play the game, it's different. And so you can't just simply like run to the end of the game because once you memorized the locations of everything, you can't do that. Since you can't just simply run to the end of the uh, location, you've got to actually play the game. See, I've gone through this before. I can't just run to where I knew where the Resistance Laboratory was before or the TechCom base was. I actually have to put the effort in. I'm taking damage. I didn't want to have to take this much damage. Sucks. Alright, there's nothing in here. Oh, no, this pipe grenade. I can turn uh, Terminator Vision off, but Terminator Vision itself is actually pretty useful because it sort of highlights the... Oh, well, that was a Skynet unit, but I can't loot it. It highlights the enemies, so even if you can't actually see them that well, you can more easily target them. On the other hand, it does actually make it a little bit easier, or a little bit more difficult to actually see, like with this. Uh, the detail in the environment seems to have been lost a little bit. In my opinion, anyway. It does sort of increase the draw distance a bit, though. So, it does help you see a bit uh, further out. See, scavenger's notebook. It's intel. And was it enough to get me anywhere? It doesn't look it. Once you get enough intel, it reveals different locations that you can go and visit. And inside of that, there'll be, of course, the tech comm guys that you gotta kill. There's some more. See, I can barely even see them with this. I have outlines. Alright. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Oh, I... Stand up. Once you get a plasma weapon, you're not really going to use the M16. I get him? Oh, there's actually three more in there. I can see them on the... I can see them on the... radar. Maybe that's why they saw me. <laughs> My flashlight on. What was it? Because I started shooting at them. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking guy had a minigun. Okay, I gotta headshot him. The miniguns have... The miniguns have a shield. So you can't... You can't just, uh... Alright, got him. There's one more. Jump. <laughs> Alright, take out the radio. Alright, killed all of these guys. Hopefully somebody has some good stuff, not just intel or ammo. There is some upgrades you can do, and I can take the minigun. Boom. You badass. Although not necessarily the weapon I'm going to be using towards the end of the game, at least if I can help it. Alright, i got to get out of the sewer here. Oh, 
Okay, if I want to heal, I I have one wrench, which I found, I guess, one broken Skynet unit. And that had, uh, that allows me to heal one time. If I hit the H button, this happens in real time, so I won't do it in a firefight. And it heals you a little bit, but that was the only heal that I had. So I gotta be careful about taking more damage. And I'm actually running a little low on ammo. So I should be a little bit careful about where I'm running and what I'm charging into, because I don't want to be taking a lot of damage. And I don't really have the weapons to get into a sustained, long firefight, you know? Resistance, lab Resistance Laboratory is up here. They're going to have some good shit in there, even though I don't really think I have the equipment necessary to put up a fight here. Alright. Once I breach this store, I'm going to get into a big fight. So I want to want to get the guy with the minigun first, then everyone else. I can take out a little bit more leisurely. Leisurely. Get their shit. <laughs> Minigun ammo, and then I continue on. Now, nope, wrong door. Got them all. <laughs> when you breach the door, you get that slow motion there. So nice. Also, it gives you a chance to get some good. Uh, Good, good headshots in. <laughs> I love it. Straight up T2 with that shit. Okay, there's a bunch more. Fire messes me up. Whoa! What the hell's going on? Anyone left alive? Alright, just a. Uh... The guy with a minigun up there. Lot of bodies to loot. Look at all these guys. You can actually see the bodies on your on your radar screen, which is useful. Ones that you haven't looted yet. I mean, so you can loop around and make sure you get each one of them. I haven't quite got the weapon. Okay. Uh, I got all of these different resistance places I gotta hit, but I'll get to those in a bit. Alright, I think this might be the last door. Ha. 
Okay. There's a Skynet unit in here. Intel gain 75. Just to repair terminators, boom. An extended repair kit. I'm not going to use that yet. Pretty sure that'll repair like all my damage. Resistance weapon cache. Okay, I don't have the big. Uh, I don't have the hideout yet. Resistance hideout. And that's really what I need. So I gotta hit a few more locations to get that information. Okay, did I get any new weapons? Yeah, yeah, I did. I got that. Oh, I already had that one. Okay. Alright, this place is cleared. Time to move on. What do we have right here? Checkpoint. Hello, Fallen Stein in here. Watch out for these mines. Trip mines. Oh. Shit. <laughs> I'm setting off explosives and these guys are like right there. Hello. Did I get him? Oh, got one. There's a lot of guys in there. Oh, I got two of them. Oh, there's another group out that way. A troll, I guess. Can't get over that? Hmm. Uh, they might be far enough away, I don't have to worry about them. No, oh, no, they're up there. All of these weapons are things that we saw in the movies. Like the sci-fi plasma rifles. Your Terminator takes a little bit more damage than I would have thought he would. Because it's... I mean, I get that like a plasma rifle, considering it's a sci-fi weapon, would do some significant damage to a Terminator, but in a lot of cases you have like, guys with M16s going and, like, shooting you with it, and that should do almost no damage. Well, I mean, it is a video game, of course. So you gotta... <laughs> you gotta make it some kind of a challenge. There's an upgrade system. I... Okay, I got a new this thing here. But you can go and let's see if I have enough stuff really to upgrade. Let's see if I'm gonna upgrade this. I have okay I got a flat damage one. Increase my clip size. Now I have to line up the upgrade with this big white block. Stability. Boom. So I upgraded this thing. More ammunition, bigger clip size, more stability. It's a win-win. I think I would have killed him if I upgraded my damage. Ah, got him. Although I don't think I have all of them. It would have told me if I had had all of them. Oh. Memory drive. HK aerial 
wreck cleared. So even though you do have to find intel in order to uh, find all of these locations, you do have to um, take in the... You do uh, have the possibility of stumbling across enemy locations and all of that just by chance. So like this, what I was just at was something that I just sort of stumbled across. I didn't have a map location or a nav point taking me there. Shit. I got, so, I got seen. Idiot. <laughs> and he's still... Uh, No, oh, just yeah, just check it out. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> we were playing as a Terminator and taking cover. All right, got him. You get a little bit of slow motion after you clear something. Oh no, there's one guy left. Oh, it's a sniper. I saw him up there. Getting up there would be a pain. I'm not quite sure how I can get up there. It's gotta be a staircase, but... Hey, here we are. Oh. Sniper neutralized, and yeah, a sniper rifle. Sniper rifles in this game are pretty awesome, because they... That way you can see through walls in a way. There we go. No one here, but if there were, I'd be able to see them while looking through the scope. Hooray for no fall damage. Had to heal. You'd be able to see them through your scope, through walls. Now, it can be a little difficult to determine if somebody is uh, behind cover or not. So that's a bit of a pain. But I'll take it, you know, that trade-off. Okay, scavengers, cash. Resistance weapons, cash. It's like right here. Oh, nope, it's in the, it's in the hole. Did I get a grenade launcher? Nice. I blew myself up with a grenade launch for my first playthrough. <laughs> Alright. Just head to, I don't have any locations here or anything, but let's just head in this direction. Now, I wonder, I mean, of course it was intentional, but the Terminator that we're playing as here, even though half his face is gone, looks like the bodybuilder that was playing as the second Terminator in the first movie. Because there were two Terminators in that movie. Oh, okay. See, look at that. There were two Terminators in that movie, but one of them was only seen in a sort of a flashback. Or a flash. Kyle's flashback, so you sort of saw the future in a way. And in that flashback, he was out on patrol and he took down an HK or something. And then he heads back to a resistance hideout. And he's just sort of resting. And a Terminator gets through the door. Dogs discover it, but it got through the door anyway. And it just starts murdering people. And it looked like this guy. Now I wonder... I mean, it's. I think it's established in the first movie. I don't know if the, the rest of the movies didn't really respect this much. But I think it was established in the first movie that the 
actual terminators was what they called the infiltrator models. And they were actually rather late uh, addition to the a rather late addition to the war. Only towards the end when Skynet started to lose did it bring in the infiltrator models. And then that's when like it's the it got really difficult and all of that. But by that point it was probably too late for Skynet and then it was gonna lose the war anyway. Later on, like later Terminator movies just sort of referred to all um, all of the machines as Terminators, regardless of whether they are infiltrators or not. My point being, though, that if this was late in the war, that an infiltrator had shown up, and it looks like the one that was... and it looks like the one that was um, attacking the base. See, look, I can see him through a wall. Can't do anything about it. I can't shoot him through the wall. But you know. That's what I found. A lucky day, I guess. Headshot. No sense in wasting ammo, right? Nice. Yeah. If. If that Terminator, when it appeared, was at towards the end of the war, and it was just sort of like one of Skynet's last ditch efforts to send these things in there, that maybe we're actually not just playing as a similar model to that Terminator, this is actually the same one. Because we never saw what happened to it. We saw Kyle fighting it, shooting at it, but we didn't see it get destroyed. So maybe it it did what it did, and then it got away, and or it didn't find what it was looking for in that base, and it's now and moved on to somewhere else. I have seemingly everything I need, but I need to get a little bit more intel as to the location of the the hideout. So I gotta keep hitting locations up. Right, bomb. Didn't quite get to where it was going. I'm having a hard time finding that scavenger's hideout, so I'm actually just gonna skip it. Move on to another one. I don't need to hit every single one of them. At least I don't in normal mode. I don't know about the harder difficulties. Oh, fallen Skynet unit. Helps you heal. Oh, I actually got two healing things out of that. That's intel. Techcom weapons cache and a hideout. Right next to each other. Fantastic. Oh, is that a Skynet unit? Awesome. No? Okay. Located the uh, Techcom bunker. So I can actually finish the now. But I'm right here, so. Oh, did I get it? Plasma minigun. Awesome, that's really what I was after. It's really what I wanted, was the plasma minigun. And let's upgrade it, because I want, I want uh, massive, massive fucking damage. Ability. Uh, can I work this? Clip. 
No, I don't want that. Do I have a damage? That I can put there. Yeah, damage nine. It's not as much as I'd want, but... And stability. There we go. All three. This was the weapon used by that Terminator in that flashback I mentioned. And it was totally awesome. <laughs> I practically got giddy when I saw this in the actual game. In the base game, not the... Uh, this expanded version. Oh. This place. So it's a little difficult to actually find your video rental. <laughs> to find your way around in, um... Because, I mean, stuff is gets moved around. Hello. Ooh, stuff. I'm a big fan of stuff. Duffel bag full of weapons. Give me a duffel bag full of weapons any day. It's a video. Technoir. It's the club. It's the club. It's the club in the original movie that um, Sarah had hidden. Because she was... There was a secret I hear about this. Like there's a switch or something. Back here. Is there... But anyway, the Sarah had, if people who aren't uh, familiar with the movie, then what the hell are you paying attention to this game for? But in the original movie, Sarah was being stalked by the Terminator, and she went into the club to use his phone. Now, she was actually, she didn't see the Terminator. What she had seen was the, um, what she had seen was... Kyle Reese, who was actually there to protect her, but she didn't know that. Running around, following her around. <laughs> and it lights up and everything. This, um... She hid in this club to call 911. And this song is playing. And anytime you put any kind of like pop music in your movie, you're gonna date the thing pretty severely. And this is definitely the only kind of the 80s is the only time it's acceptable to have a song like this in your movie. But it actually like fits pretty well with the scene because there's this. It was one of the better scenes in the movie actually. There was this moment where she is in there and the Terminator finds out she's there because the Terminator's in her apartment when she calls there to try to get a hold of her roommate. And the Terminator arrives and Reese is already there. And there's this slow motion scene as she's in the club and she's she's sitting in the middle of the room. I guess just to make sure that everybody can see her. That, like, thinking that nobody would uh, attack her or whatever. Because a bunch of people with the same name as her were murdered that day. And she thinks that somebody's after her. Somebody, I mean, somebody is, really. Paranoia was justified. So she's sitting in the middle of the room, and she's sitting at the table. And she knocks a, like, a water bottle or something off the table. And she bends over to pick it up, and as she does that, the Terminator walks by. Now, it was this great scene, though, because the Terminator is immediately hostile as soon as it sees someone it's trying to kill. So, how do you share, like, the two of them in frame together without him trying to kill her? Well, she knocks the bottle off the table, and she, when she goes to pick it up, it walks by. And because she was bent down, it doesn't see her. It keeps moving. Now it moves to the other side of the room and turns around and then sees her and comes back to kill her. 
and that's when Reese intervenes. Jeez, how did these people ever win this war? And then that's when shit hits the fan and the Terminator starts filling the room full of lead. Just guns down a whole bunch of people trying to get at her. Really pulls off the tension so much better than, say, I'd like to do a review of the Terminator movies at some point. I want to do some more movie reviews. It's something I do enjoy doing. But comparing it to, uh, what was the most recent movie called? Uh, it wasn't Genesis, it was... The one with the, the girl from Halton Pitch Fire in it. Uh, can't remember her name either. Tells that movie called. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, uh oh. Um, Terminator Salvation? No, that was Salvation. Whatever. Whatever the most recent movie was. The one that still has fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. <laughs> that movie, like, in the beginning when the Terminator first encounters its target, it has this, like, really ridiculous over-the-top scene where it's making these enormous jumps, it's leaping across the room, and it's smashing through walls and all that kind of shit. And it's intended to imply, like, okay, there's a lot of tension in this scene, and this thing chasing after them is is so dangerous and all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately where I think it fell flat though there was no sort of grounding to it. Whereas in the original Terminator movie there's this moment and the, the music is slowly like building up where the she, the Sarah I mean uh, is trying to flee and then the Terminator guns shoots in her direction and guns down the person that was behind her and that person's body falls on top of her. And she's struggling to get away. The Terminator just sort of like, it walks quickly, but it walks up in her direction, reloading the, uh, relo reloading the Uzi it was carrying. And like, that was how you do that kind of scene properly. You don't have the Terminator leaping across leaping across balconies and smashing your way through walls. But then when you do something like that, you kind of remove the grounding from it. You make it difficult for a person to sort of conceptualize exactly what's going on, exactly what the threat is. I'm actually pretty close to the end of this. As long as these guys keep lining up, getting gunned down like freaking fish in a barrel. Hey. I didn't realize I could breach through here. That's awesome. Are you dead, or are you, like, dry-humping this dude? Uh, how do I get through? I'm on the wrong side of the fence. I'm not even gonna bother looting the bodies anymore. I don't need ammo. There's only like a couple more Smash people this in metal kill. motherfucker to junk. Kill. One, two, three. <laughs> you have anything? Yeah, he has stuff, even though this is the end of the game, actually. Here we are. 39 minutes it took. So that was it. In the original movie, for people who aren't fans, the Terminator had gone back to assassinate Sarah Connor because she would eventually mother John Connor, who, when the machines would eventually rise up and, and try to uh, destroy humanity, John Connor 
formed a resistance that fought back and eventually defeated them. So in a last ditch effort to avoid being destroyed, Skynet, which was the like the leader of the machines, sent back an infiltrator terminator back in time to assassinate her so John would never be born, and therefore never lead the resistance. This is a nice little side story here though, seeing how I mean it was mentioned in the original movie that the records were destroyed in or the war that precipitated the rise of machines and they didn't really the machines that is didn't really have much information on Sarah Connor herself they didn't know they didn't even know what her full name was all they knew was the around about location she was and here it is the machine doing all this destruction breaking in all these places just to find one piece of information what her name was that way you would when an the other Terminator, the Schwarzenegger Terminator, would go back in time to 1984, it would know who to target. It's a cool little side story. I, I, this, uh, I, I do have a lot of appreciation for this game, even though the AI is, is ass and half. <laughs> All the little touches and little details, like this is, of course, not... I mean, James Cameron, I'm sure, didn't sign off on this being canon or anything like that. But you can totally imagine it being that. Anyway, that was uh, Terminator Resistance Infiltrator Mode. The startup scene said it would take about 45 minutes to get through there. That took about 38. Your mileage is going to vary depending on, like, if you just stumble across things easily. In like, hitting the resistance uh, laboratory pretty early was a lucky break but you know it could take longer i guess anyway there we go